Welcome to Forensics 101. Today's topic is how to tell the difference between a boy and a girl. In case you haven't seen some of our other videos, you may be interested to know that I have a degree in criminal justice and forensics, and my husband is a retired police officer who spent a lot of his time on the force working with transgenders. And so, together in this video, we will be using the science of forensics to help you, the viewer, tell the difference between a boy and a girl. Many people are having great difficulty with this topic, so let's use Justin Bieber as an example. Many teenagers live in rooms like this one. This is just one example of how many vulnerable young girls have turned their bedrooms into a Justin Bieber shrine and have bought the lie that she is a young male. And yet, some very perceptive people out there have noticed that Justin Bieber has some very feminine physical features. She has so many feminine features, in fact, that some Photoshop experts have discovered that they can quickly and easily transform any picture of Justin's face into that of a very attractive woman. It is so easy to do that all Justin's face really needs is some feminine hair and plucked eyebrows. See for yourself. Justin looks so feminine, in fact, that she appeared on a top 50 list. Beaver is considered by coedmagazine.com to be one of the top 50 women on the web. In fact, she is so popular that she made number 7. To top it off, the Daily News went as far as stating, It's a good thing Justin Bieber got a haircut. It turns out he has often been mistaken for a girl. Now the average male would protest such an insult to their masculinity. Bieber, a girl, had no reason to protest. Make no mistake here, Justin Bieber is, in fact, a girl. And so, the Co-Ed Magazine article answers some very important social questions, like, Why do so many people see Justin Bieber as a transgendered girl and not a young man? Was Justin Bieber, in fact, born a girl? The answer to these questions demand more than just a public opinion poll. You are about to see scientific evidence that exposes the uncomfortable truth that Justin Bieber was in fact born female. Justin Bieber is in fact one of the most infamous transsexuals on the planet. And so, let's begin. Let's take a close look at Justin Bieber's skull structure and compare it to the skull of a real man. It is important to note that both photos are of individuals who were only aged a few years apart when the photos were taken. In this first image, we can clearly see the contour of both foreheads. Notice the different angles of each forehead. The female forehead is more vertical than the male forehead, and this gives the young female a more childlike appearance. Notice how Daniel Radcliffe has a more angled forehead angled in a way that is more consistent with being a male. When we look at the individual on the right, we see a more vertical forehead, a trait that is more typically found in females. Bieber doesn't just fail the male forehead test when paired up with Daniel Radcliffe. She fails the same test when paired up with Vanilla Ice. She fails when paired up with Mark Wahlberg as well. Perhaps Bieber will pass the male brow ridge challenge. The eyebrow ridge is the bony structure located above the eye. It is the ridge located on the brow line. The brow ridge tends to be very thin and subtle in females, but the brow ridge is more rounded and pronounced in males. While looking at the brow ridges of these two individuals, we can easily see that while the actor on the left has a very distinct brow ridge consistent with the typical ridge on a male skull, 
The female actress on the right has no noticeable brow ridge, one that is consistent with the smooth features of a female skull. Are you seeing it yet? Perhaps. This will help. Miley Cyrus, the female pop star with red lipstick, might help you see just how feminine Justin's brow ridge truly is, even without the lipstick. In fact, Miley's forehead appears to be just a little more masculine than Justin's. Can you guess what Miley was trying to tell the world about Justin when she decided to go with Justin's hairstyle and eyebrow contour? Now back to the comparison with the male skull. Let's take a look at the jawline. The female jaw is typically smaller than the male's and is rounded, where the male's jaw is broader and squarer. Notice in the image on the left how the jawline under the ear is much more square in shape. The jaw on the left is consistent with the square jaw found in the male skull. However, in the image on the right, we see a very soft jawline with very smooth definition. This is consistent with the very feminine female skull. Now let's take a look at the same features in comparison to a known female. In case you didn't notice, in both images, the angle of the foreheads indicate that we are looking at two females. Can you see which female has bigger ears? And when we take a close look at the brow ridge, or lack thereof, we can clearly see that the flat brow ridges also indicate that these are both females. And a close look at the jaw contour reveals that both of these girls have skulls that were formed by female DNA. Justin and Selena do, in fact, make a perfect couple. A couple of girls, that is. And one feature that girls have, a feature that is quite easy to see in girls with a normal healthy build, is the size of the shoulders. In fact, this feature is an easy way to determine the gender of both men and women. As you can see in this image, the natural size of a healthy woman's shoulders is about two and a half times the width of her head. The natural size of a healthy man's shoulders is three times the width of his head. And so, when we look at Justin Bieber's shoulders, we see shoulders consistent with those of a woman. Oh no! Even a muscular Justin, who has hired a personal trainer, can't seem to build those shoulder muscles enough to accomplish a male shoulder width. Justin works very hard with her personal trainer to distort the femininity in her shoulders. Justin works out specifically to increase the size of her deltoids and various back muscles. This makes the size of her shoulders appear slightly larger and helps to decrease her feminine hourglass shape. Speaking of hourglass shape, can you see it? Can you see that something isn't right with Justin's waist? You see, after doing all of that work to hide her true form and femininity, her childbearing hips and hourglass shape still remain. And so, let's take a closer look at the difference between the natural waist indent points of males and females. Notice how the waist indent points appear to be very different. One indent point is located below the navel, and the other is located above the navel. And there is a good reason for that. Women have bigger hips than men. They need bigger hips for when they become pregnant. It is quite easy to see Justin's feminine hips. And, <coughs> and, oh man, excuse me, all this talk about Justin getting pregnant is ugh, making me feel a bit woozy. Excuse me for a moment. Please be advised, barf bags are located beneath your seat. Please feel free to use them at any time. Sorry, you're going to have to excuse my husband. 
These investigations can be a little stomach-turning sometimes. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Don't be distracted by the fact that Justin has added some bulk to her shoulders by working with a personal trainer. Even after working hard to distort the appearance of her shoulders, it is still quite easy to draw a line from below her armpit to her hip joint. If you draw the same line on the image of a healthy man, the side of the torso makes a straight line right to the hip. However, on the thin woman with the bulky arms named Justin, if you draw a line from the armpit to the hip joint, a visible indentation at the midpoint of that line appears. Remember, it is this indent located above the navel that gives a woman her hourglass shape. When we put Justin next to the image of a young Mark Wahlberg in a similar pose, we find the same results. Again, we have the man on the left whose neck appears much larger. And when we compare the waist indent points, we see that Mr. Wahlberg does not have an hourglass waist. He has a waist indent at the belt line, while the Miss Bieber on the right still has an hourglass shape. While Justin Bieber works hard to bulk out her shoulders and her feminine abdominal muscles, she just can't seem to get rid of her natural hourglass shape. There is no surgery that can accomplish that feat. Once again, we have clear images of the waist indent points on each of these individuals, with the waist indent point line high above the navel on the individual on the right, we have a clear indication that we are looking at a female in that image. While they both present themselves to be men, only one of them truly is. On the other hand, when we put a picture of Justin before she started using testosterone and getting help from a personal trainer to bulk up her shoulders, when we put her next to women with similar builds, we see very similar body proportions. The necks, biceps, abdominal muscles, waist indent points, and overall body structures are all a much closer match than when we attempt to put Justin next to a male. Do you know why that is? Can you see it yet? Do you believe? Yeah? It's because Justin is a girl. As you can clearly see in this photo, when looking at these three women, the body proportions, the muscle build, the waist indent points, all scream female in all three of these images. And it is worth noting that Justin has an even more pronounced waist indent point than the woman on the right. And because we have established that Justin is a girl, perhaps this image may be more appropriate for the viewer of this video. So what happened to Justin Bieber's breasts? This is a very important question and one that needs to be addressed. The answer is really quite simple. When a young girl named Justin began taking hormone replacement therapy at a young age, her breasts did not develop during puberty. Testosterone therapy in young girls results in a more masculine muscle development, especially if it begins before puberty, and that is exactly what Justin did. Justin Bieber began taking testosterone before she reached puberty. She also managed her estrogen levels so that her breasts would not develop. Now that the topless issue is behind us, Let's take a closer look at Justin's pectoral muscles. Since Justin Bieber is only 5 feet 7 inches tall, it is important to note that we are putting her next to photos of a young male actor who is also the same height. Notice the very different shape of the pectoral muscles on each individual. Perhaps this will help. Notice how Justin's pectoral muscles are narrower and rounder to support the breasts that would have developed on her if she hadn't begun hormone replacement therapy at a very young age? 
once again, beside Mark Wahlberg, the difference in pectoral muscles is obvious. Notice how a man's pectoral muscles extend squarely to the biceps? Now that we've compared the muscle build of these two individuals, let's look at some of the other physical differences between males and females. Because these two individuals share a similar muscle build, we can easily compare the size of their necks. The boy named Tom on the left has a neck that appears to be much wider than the neck of the real tomboy on the right. Justin's narrow neck problem is just a bit of blowback from her female DNA. The testosterone therapy can't do much to help her with her neck size, and anyone who has listened to her sing has probably realized by now that the testosterone really didn't lower her voice too much either. Speaking of her voice... When Justin is singing, she likes to show off another not-so-well-known difference between men and women, and that is the length of her ring finger. Studies have found that before a child is born, the sex hormones estrogen and testosterone control genes, genes that in turn dictate finger length. The testosterone produced in the body of the child during fetal development is higher in male children, and this causes a boy's ring finger to grow longer than his index finger. The increased levels of estrogen in female children during development will result in the development of shorter ring fingers in the female child in the womb. Once again, the ring finger tends to be shorter in most women in relation to the length of their index finger. And so, when we take a close look at Justin's ring finger, we can clearly see the effects of the hormone that was dominant in her fetal development. We can clearly see that the levels of estrogen during her fetal development resulted in her ring finger being shorter than that of the average male. When Justin is compared to an actual man, her feminine fingers stand out like a sore thumb. And so, the more Justin tries to keep her female DNA a secret, the more she ends up showing off her feminine ring finger. Justin simply cannot conceal all of her feminine traits. She tries very hard to do so, but she can't. Aside from Justin's feminine form and skeletal structure, there are other gender signatures that deserve some attention. Her high-pitched voice, lack of facial and body hair, and the absence of an Adam's apple, and childlike features are all very telling. And so, why is the public not being told about Justin's true female identity? Who is helping her to keep this information a secret? The mainstream media is playing a big part in promoting Bieber's deception. The mainstream media editors are well aware of Justin Bieber's true gender. In fact, the MSM often flaunts Justin's true gender right in the faces of those who choose to idolize her as a male. The MSM wants you to believe the lie that they are flaunting. It is through subliminal brainwashing that the MSM pushes the message, Bieber and Believe. Their brainwashing psychological operation, or PSYOP, is in fact so effective that now, when most people hear the name Justin Bieber, they simply believe that she is a he. That his mom's story is so, I mean, she suffered a lot early in life, found refuge in a love for the performing arts, which is something she passed on to her son. Her mom, Patty Millette. Her mom, Patty Millette. Her mom, her mom, her mom, her mom, Patty Millette. The mainstream media is a big supporter of the transgender movement. There are many ways that the mainstream media tries to subconsciously plant into people's minds 
that Justin is a male, and one way is by photo staging. Justin dresses and intentionally poses for the camera in a way that is very similar to the way that Mark Wahlberg did when he was better known as Marky Mark. She makes great efforts to imitate him. She even likes to expose her underwear to give the illusion of Wahlberg's male rapper confidence. While Marky Mark had some excessive confidence in his youth, Justin Bieber truly only has a padded cup, a cup so flimsy that all she really has to hold on to are her feminine hips. And even though she has done a lot of work with her personal trainer to minimize her hourglass form, if you look carefully, you can clearly see her feminine features, like her feminine lower abdominal muscles, her narrow neck, and the skull features that she cannot change. But Justin can change her hair. Justin likes to fix up her hairdo in a way that reinvents herself as the new vanilla eyes. She likes to wear similar performance clothing that has extended shoulders, and she has managed to cover herself with similar tattoos as well to become the ice queen she has always dreamed of becoming. Justin uses trick-of-the-eye wardrobe deceptions. It is not uncommon for Justin to wear long shirts to cover the more private areas of her body. Notice also how frail Justin appears next to two males. This image was a safe image to release because the two males are short in stature, making Justin appear to blend in and trick the eye. Justin also stands slightly in front of them, making her shoulders appear more broader and masculine. In case you haven't figured it out by now, there is no male genital bulge in those pants. Justin is a transgender Creating the illusion of male body traits is not easy to do. Justin puts a lot of effort into concealing the area around her genitalia. She will sag her pants, wear long t-shirts, place her hands over that area, and even wear special padding to help her with the deception. Speaking of padding, there has been a lot of propaganda surrounding Justin when she appears only wearing her underwear. And why would that be? Because the mainstream media wants to strengthen the illusion that Justin is a male. But for those with a trained eye, it is quite obvious that Justin has padding in her underwear. Justin is seen here wearing underwear with a special pocket that supports male genitalia. She uses this pocket to insert padding in order to give the illusion that she is a male. However, in these staged photos of Justin, we can clearly see that she was having a padding malfunction. You see, male models, real male models, like the one in this photo, ones who have a clear waist indent point at the hip, never leave a lot of air in their underwear, ever. But Justin Bieber has enough space in her underwear well, to put a full set of male genitalia. But the revelations don't end there regarding the Calvin Klein staged event. In this image, unbeknownst to most of the people in the audience, Justin is actually modeling a typical female-to-male post-surgery transformation. Her publicity team thought this would be a great venue to finally have her appear without all of the baggy clothes concealing her female genitalia. And yet, with all of the advances in medical technology, it seems as though their efforts to transform female genitalia into male genitalia is still in the early stages. Even a little bit of padding will not conceal those very long feminine legs and that very feminine waistline, but clothing will. And by the way, this is just another very classic example of photo staging. The photos were literally taken on a stage. Speaking of photo staging, 
Notice how Justin's jacket has extended shoulders to make the shoulders appear more masculine? Notice also the pants that Justin is wearing. It is not uncommon to see Justin sagging her pants, not only to conceal the genital area, but also to give the illusion that her torso is longer, as men generally have longer torsos than women. Justin has a short torso and very long feminine legs that she is carefully hiding behind those baggy pants. When we look at the feet, we see some white unlaced shoes that appear large and bulky, giving Justin's feet a more masculine look as well. This photo reveals how Justin goes through great efforts to hide the fact that she has the average size feet for a female her height. She is a size seven and a half in men's shoes. And for those who might suggest that it is Justin's short stature that explains the feminine feet, then it may interest you to know that Tom Cruise, who is the same height as Justin Bieber, wears a size 9 in men's shoes. Even though Katie Holmes is 2 inches taller than Tom, the difference in the size of their feet is quite noticeable. And Daniel Radcliffe standing at only 5 feet 5 inches tall, wears a size 10 in men's shoes. In this image, we see Daniel with his girlfriend, who stands several inches taller, with feet that are much smaller than his. Bieber, if she was a man, would have embarrassingly small feet when standing next to any other man. And so, as not to embarrass her, we will compare her feet to that of another woman. In this image, we have a clear view of Justin's feet next to Selena's, and what we see are four feet of similar size, even with a girl who is two inches shorter than she is. Here we see another staged photo of Justin, at a beach, again dressed very inappropriately for the occasion and trying once again to hide her small feet and her feminine torso. Justin is again wearing a very long t-shirt, very bulky shoes, and sagging her pants to a height where they can only serve one purpose, and that is to distort her true female proportions. Had Justin pulled up her pants to the appropriate location, then her waist would perfectly match that of the other female next to her. But one thing this photo reveals, unbeknownst to Justin, is her very feminine wrists and small feminine hands. Now because Selena was introduced to the worldwide audience as a distraction from Justin's true gender, let's talk more about her. Selena Gomez was introduced to the public as Justin Bieber's longtime girlfriend. Selena played a very important role in the deception, but why was Selena chosen to be on the media stage at Justin's side? First of all, Justin Bieber is not very large. She is the average size of a woman standing at only 5 feet 7 inches tall, and so Justin needed somebody who would appear more feminine standing next to her. Selena Gomez is only 5 feet 5 inches tall, 2 inches shorter than Justin. Selena is a very petite female. She helps with the deception by making her girlfriend Justin appear to be taller, and she has received millions of dollars as she played her part in deceiving the public. In this photo, it is quite easy to see how Selena becomes the perfect distraction from the very feminine features of Justin. But this photo reveals that all the while, Justin was going for the Julie Andrews look, the way she appeared in the Broadway musical Victor Victoria. Speaking of hands, Here's a good example of the contrast between the size of a woman's hands and those of a real man. In other words, Justin and Selena both have feminine hands. 
Now, since Broadway wasn't afraid to present Julie Andrews as a male, it should not surprise you to learn that teen magazines are not afraid to clearly present Justin as a female either. Can you see the eyeshadow, the lipstick, and the foundation in this photo? If your eyes are open, you can, and it is quite obvious as we look at this magazine cover that we are looking at the face of a female. As we flip through teen magazine covers, we begin to see a clear trend. Magazine editors are totally flaunting right in front of the faces of gullible teenage girls and the rest of the world that the teen idol Justin Bieber is a girl. And this trend of exposing Justin is not isolated to only teen magazines. The theme color that magazine editors prefer to pin to Justin is pink. Magazine editors around the world boldly flaunt Justin's true gender. But it's not just any pink. It is the same pink color used at baby showers when... It's a girl! Aww. By now, it should be obvious that Justin is being used by the entertainment industry to push the transgender movement, a movement that has secretly and successfully infiltrated all aspects of pop culture, including music, sports, news, politics, and fashion. The transgender movement has introduced new lines of clothing. It has introduced new hairstyles that deliberately blur gender. The fashions of men and women are now becoming so similar, in fact, that distinguishing between genders is becoming increasingly more difficult. And one social movement, in particular, is celebrating as a result. The LGBT movement has been in full swing for the last few decades, and because society at large decided to tolerate the LGBT movement instead of continuing to treat it as what it truly is, the result of a mental disorder named gender dysphoria, the effects of this movement took their toll. The LGBT movement has drastically altered the perceptions of the general public, the time in human history when it was easy to tell the difference between men and women has now come to an end. The outward defining traits of gender have now become so distorted and blurred that most people have lost their ability to discern the true biological gender of the people they meet. The transgender movement, at its core, is a movement that focuses on deceiving others about a person's biological gender. A person's biological and true gender is in fact genetically stamped on the DNA of every cell in the human body. Like the cells that make every fine female strand of hair on Justin's head, the mainstream media is playing a big role in the transgender deception. For example, talk show host Ellen does not hide her preference for females. Ellen likes to invite her rounded jaw friend on her show quite frequently. Her show even presented this Michael Bublé version of Justin Bieber to her audience. But does Justin Bieber have any of the masculine features of Michael Bublé? Let's have a closer look and see. Let's compare foreheads. Does Justin Bieber have a more slanted forehead? The kind that is found on males? Nope. How about the neck size? Fail. The shoulders? Not. Who has the dainty little ears? Bieber does. Square jaw? Buble. Male hairline? Not on Bieber. Masculine hands? Uh -uh. In fact, Buble appears to be quite fond of his feminine looking friend. It is undeniable. And so does Jimmy Fallon, whose square jaw and daunting masculine features make Bieber's feminine skull jump right out of the screen when they are side by side. 
The MSM editors are well aware of Justin Bieber's true gender. In fact, the MSM often flaunts Justin's true gender right in the faces of those who choose to idolize her as a male. The MSM wants you to believe that Bieber's padded underwear is something more than padded underwear. But it is really quite pathetic that she has to fake her manhood, and that is what this Saturday Night Live actress succeeds in conveying, and she does so quite effectively as she flaunts the problem beneath the padded underwear. In reality, the Justin Bieber that so many people are idolizing is just a frail little female who hides behind her photo staging sessions, her Photoshop experts, and her personal trainer. And when transgenders effectively deceive other people, something very disturbing often happens. Their deception sets the stage for gullible people to become attracted to someone of the same sex. And when they realize what has happened, their experience of being deceived often results in a sense of betrayal and confusion about their own sexual orientation. Justin Bieber has presented herself as an idol of worship to gullible teenagers. She is continually propped up as a male poster child on the bedroom walls of young girls throughout the world. She has allowed herself to be adored by millions of ignorant and easily gullible teenagers for long enough. It is time to lift the veil off of Justin. It is time to look behind the charade. It is time to see that Justin Bieber is really just Barbie. Justin Bieber earned a special congratulations for her deception from Michael Obama, the man on the left, another infamous transsexual, another great deceiver, and another great antichrist. But that's another story. To see the forensic proof that exposes Michael Obama, watch irrefutable proof that Michelle Obama is a man. And while you're doing that, you might want to think, about how the parents of young girls are going to explain to their daughters that their homosexual attraction to Justin Bieber isn't a sign that they are homosexuals. The girls who bought the Belieber lie have in essence only been worshipping themselves, propped up as a teen idol and dressed in male clothes. Now that's something they can truly believe. Now that just Barbie is out of the closet. You know something? She would have been better at show business if she hadn't mutilated her gender in the first place.